um, pretty much grew up in this church ever since she was five years old. Um, uh, our daughter, Madeline Daniel, she's a junior at Dable High School. Um, she's, she's always had a love for Christ, always had a love for, for helping you know, those in need. She's, uh, she's volunteered with several entities with mentally and physically uh, handicapped, handicapped children and adults both. Um, and uh, <clears throat> she, this last summer she actually was at Camp Aska again. Uh, she's done that for several years. And then Robin Horton, she's a, a registered nurse that works with us currently. She's been a nurse for over 11 years. She's worked kind of the gamut. She's done uh, newborn nursery, pediatrics, labor and delivery. Uh, she's currently with Lake Martin uh, as Lake Martin Hospice. Um, she's helped uh, around um, the needy. She, she feeds. Woo. She's, she's been feeding uh, the needy at Thanksgiving time. She, she's volunteered with Meals on Wheels, just very active in, in not only Tallapoosa County, but surrounding counties as well. And then uh, Chad McKelvey. Chad was uh, born and raised here in Dable. He's a, a member of, or deacon actually, at First Baptist Church here in Dable. He's principal at the Edward Bell Career Technical Center. Um, now Chad, you, a lot of people who have kids or like to go to the ball fields, you may see him volunteering his time every year. He's on the ball fields with everybody's kids running to him, calling him coach. But um, we're up here this morning kind of to tell you about this, this exciting trip, this opportunity that we have. It's a mission trip. It's kind of specifically um, a medical mission trip. We, we've uh, come upon this opportunity to come and uh, we're going to be traveling to uh, remote mountainous regions of Honduras actually, um, providing some medical care to those who can otherwise not access that care. Um, that's one part of it. The other part of it is we're going to make disciples. Uh, we're going to make a difference with Jesus. We want them to, to have something to hold on to once we leave. We're going to make disciples who can then continue to go and make disciples. Now Chad's been on a few mi uh, mission trips before. He's, he's hiked through the jungles of Peru to Brazil. He's been to some of these remote uh, regions in Honduras as well. So I'm going to turn it over to him and let him kind of tell you what he's seen and, and the benefits of these mission trips. Good morning, everybody. It's, uh, I'm excited to be here and really excited about what the Lord uh, is going to do uh, through this church and, and, and through this mission team. Uh, over the past few years, uh, like Heath said, I had the opportunity to go on some mission trips and uh, each time uh, the Lord started dealing with me personally uh, to the point to where I said, uh, that's something I, I want to be a part of. So I partnered up with a, a company out of uh, Louisiana called XMA or Extreme Missionary Adventures. And over the past year, uh, went through a training process with them. And um, June, this past June was sort of the culmination of that uh, process and went on a, a trip where I sort of co-led a trip, um, a team into Honduras. And... Um, went up into the mountains and visited three villages over the courses, uh, course of about five days. And um, sat down with each of the pastors and said, um, if we were to come back, what is it that, you, that your village needs most of all? And all three of them said, without, uh, without hesitation at all, we need medicine. And um, Three pastors, three different villages all said the same thing. So on the flight home, I had a flight from Houston over to Atlanta. I was by myself, nobody on the plane around me. And uh, it was like God just sat down beside me and said, All right, big boy, I gave you, I gave you a challenge. What are you going to do with it? And um, so I got home, and a couple of days later, I texted. Um, I got to thinking, All right, who, who, who's in medicine that would be interested in this? So I texted uh, a good friend and um, who's got a good reputation with medicine and um, obviously he said no and I had to go find Laura and Heath but, <laughs> so <laughs> no, no uh, I texted Heath and when the message came back uh, you could hear the I, I could just feel the excitement in the phone uh, and the way he responded and he said Laura's interested uh, before this is over we may take the whole family I don't know but um, uh, they were excited, and um, it's really just come together. It's amazing how God has put it together in such a quick uh, time period, and, and uh, really interested to see what he's going to do with it. So where we'll be going is a town called Olanchito. Olanchito's in a, in a valley. It's extremely hot there. Um, 
Uh, Dole has some large plantations. They grow bananas and pineapples there. Um, but we'll head up into the mountains, and the people there, they're, they're small villages um, living in clay, clay homes um, and, and huts, so to speak. Um, they'll farm coffee bananas and corn that's the three main crops that they'll grow some of the women will, will walk down the mountain two or three hours each morning and work on the dole plantations they they don't make uh, very much money at all the men work from sun up to sundown um, in june while we were there we did a eyeglass clinic um, people 60 and 70 years old uh, got eyeglasses for the first time in their life. You put a Bible in front of them and they, they, were actually, they could actually see words on a piece of paper for the first time in 20 or more years. Uh, women were, able to, were going to be able to uh, thread a needle and sew for the first time in, in a long time and they just begin to cry. Uh, you know, their, their culture is, um, women have very, really they have no standing. Uh, within within society and within the home, a lot of spousal abuse and those types of things. Uh, but in the church, uh, the little small churches in each village, if the pastors often say we'll have 20, 25 people there, only three or four men, the rest are women and children. So part of what Heath was talking about, discipleship, it's really going to be, uh, if women have no say in the family and no say in the community, the question is how do you get men into the churches? And that'll be part of what we're doing is trying to uh, encourage men to be men of God and, and to answer the call to be church leaders and that sort of thing. Um, lastly, uh, over the past month, I've had the opportunity to uh, get to know a guy in Trustville, Alabama. He runs a nonprofit organization called Designs for Hope. You guys don't know this. I don't think I've had an opportunity to tell you. But he has created and designed. He's a mechanical engineer. He he's designed a, a, a battery that's solar powered. And the idea is, is that when the sun goes down, because a pastor would normally not be able to go into homes because there's no electricity, the man gets back to the home after working all day. Uh, nighttime hours are not usually, uh, there's not, no opportunity to, to minister at that time. This battery with some LED lights, a cell phone charger, those types of things, he can walk the trails, go to people's homes, sit down and, and actually pull out a Bible and read it with a light, uh, actually see people that, that are in the room and share the gospel and do the things that a minister can, uh, that we think they should be able to do. He'll be able to do that at night now. So really excited about partnering with them and having the opportunity to sort of test this out and see how it's going to work in villages. Uh, most of all, just uh, like to encourage you to, su to support these guys. They, uh, they're going to need you. Uh, they'll need their church, and uh, I know uh, they, they've been very confident in saying our church uh, is going to get fired up about this. So thank you. We look forward to working with you. Now, after Chad kind of approached us, <clears throat> we knew, I mean, it takes a lot of people for mission teams. Uh, I've, of course, been researching pretty heavily um, one of the last mission trips, medical mission trips, that was in Honduras. They were there for 10 days. They saw over 700 patients. <laughs> that's, uh, that's a little different than our 30 to 40 a day. You know, so, so we got our, our jobs cut out for us. So we was thinking, you know, we kind of went our separate ways. We started praying about uh, you know needing help who else could could we get that both was was medical oriented and Christ oriented so we're praying and and God kind of slapped us in the face a little bit cuz he he sent us a guy he was a previous nurse in Birmingham um, before he went to take his uh, job at the preacher and ended up <laughs> preaching here so as, as Laura and I were fretting about the cost and, you know, getting him to pray with us and for us, and he hears about this, and he was on board before we even asked him. He's had experience. Um, he's actually been to Honduras on mission trips. Uh, so he knows the culture. He knows the environment. And, of course, is, it can help on the medical side and the discipleship and Christ side. So Brother Michael is going to be going with us, of course. Now, from, from our medical side of the mission, what we're looking for, we're actually buying thousands 
and thousands of antibiotics, um, medical supplies such as wound care products, cleaning agents, feminine products. We'll have to take our own equipment. This will be carried in, carried out kind of stuff. Um, we're looking at about $15,000. Um, it's kind of our base average of what this trip is going to cost us. Now we do have, we have got Lake Martin uh, Family Medicine, or the pharmacy, I'm sorry, Lakeshore Pharmacy and the Medicine Shop. They're going to donate what they can as far as medications, but we will be purchasing large quantities of those. Um, so any and all donations that may come to your heart, we'll certainly accept those. We're going to be doing lots and lots of fundraisers. Um, we kind of mentioned a couple of them. We're going to be in town. We're going to be doing all sorts of things. Um, but speaking of donations, if somebody, if God lays it on your heart to donate to one of us or somebody, there's, there's a couple ways we can do that rather than giving us the money as far as getting a, a, a tax break. The easiest way to, would be to write a check to this church, um, the church sets it aside in an account. Uh, you can put the name of the person you want to donate to, or you can just generically write Honduras m Mission Trip. Um, the church would again, provide you a statement at the end of the year, the donation statement showing that it was donated to, a, 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 you know, so you can use it on your taxes. Uh, the other way would be um, the company we're using, XMA Extreme Missionary Adventures, uh, you could write a check to them as well. Um, name of the person that you want to donate to, they put that uh, towards our monies for that cost of the trip. Now I know some of y'all can't see, but you might want to wonder, might be wondering why we're barefooted. Um, I'll get a verse I want to read you, but uh, I was hoping we might get a pedicure, but that's not going to work, I don't guess. But there's, there's a verse, Romans 10, uh, 14 and 15. I want to read it to you as you can see it on the screen. Um, just before this, for, verse 13, let me do that. It says, for everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. And then 14, but how are they to call on one whom they've not believed? And how are they to believe in one whom they've not heard? And how are they to hear without someone to proclaim him? And how are they to proclaim him unless they are sent? How beautiful are the feet that bring the good news. So we're very thankful and humble to be the feet taking the good news. Thank you. <laughs>